Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hi everybody, it's Sunny and Char, and he is the most famous medium in the world and has done more for this work than anybody I know and tire tirelessly works at helping people understand about life after death. He's been on every show, including Oprah, including Ellen. I mean, there's like this entire list of, th if I went through his whole biography it would it we, we'd be here all day because uh, John Edward is the man that started crossing over and was the only person to really get a show on the air that helped people understand about life after death and about psychic phenomena and he did it with 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 joy and with class and and and, and he's and he's just so gifted and I'm so excited because uh, more important to me is that he's my friend and he's been very kind to me and he's here today. John, thank you for being here. Thank you, what an introduction. Well, so I, cool. it comes from my heart because I didn't, I looked at your, I looked at your like biography and like, I think we should change some of the things in it. <laughs> you, because you say you work, you, you've read for everyday people and you know, like teachers and uh, you know, students and blah, 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 and all these things. But you've also read for very famous people. You don't even have that in here. No. And no, because I know you don't like to talk about it. But the other thing is, you've, you've really, you're the only one that I know that's gone around the world who, who's been in Australia. I mean, you can't go to Australia without people stopping him on the streets. England, you speak all over the world. You speak, and how do you understand all those accents? In I don't. I don't hear them anymore. It's, re it's really except Scotland. Scotland is the yeah. I was going to say Scotland is Scotland. the one place that I still get a little panicky when I walk out there because I, I have a hard time understanding you, the accent. I remember once you called me and you were in the car, and you were either in Scotland or Ireland. I was in Ireland. You were in Ireland. You, you remember? remember I, yeah, I do. Do you remember why I called you? Why did you call me? But I'm so. thinking, why is he calling me? He's going on to speak. And I got involved. It was a. It was a case. It was somebody that. Uh, Somebody called me about a case. Oh, right, 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 right. And the, the FBI. Shouldn't say FBI. Just a, a friend. <laughs> a friend. <laughs> Shouldn't say that. Yeah, about a case, right. And then I had called you and said, hey, this is something, I'm just curious, right. what do you, right. what do you think of? Yeah. Where we've done that because before, where is like, where if we we're, work on things together. Where I'd be like, listen, I'm seeing this in a certain way, I want to make sure I'm not missing something. And you remember I used to talk about French Shelley Pack. She and I used to she, do that quite a that bit. That was his his best friend who passed away. Who I know you miss all every day. Every day. And he's got pictures of her all over his office. And yep, every day. She was, you know, just kind of funny because she was my mother's age. Yeah, but like, she was like your. She just was. She's like, yeah, she's she like, was your. She was your buddy, and she was your psychic buddy, and and you helped each other, and you all, and you helped her, and Ooh. you helped. Uh, the thing that people don't know about John is that he helps a lot of people. I mean, I can name like just a few things off the top of my head he's the one that said get a dog and when john said i better get a dog i better get a dog <laughs> hello sunny you better thank your uncle john and um i don't know you, you're just very generous with everything you do for thank the you. work you do thank you yeah that's well, our passion right and right and you and you still give uh kudos to um sandy anastasi mm -hmm. who taught you about Mediumship? Just not so much mediumship. What? Uh, more about, I think, the ethics and responsibility early on when about doing this work. I found that as a, I was 15 when I started. So being 15 and coming into the subject matter, not knowing, <coughs> like, what the rules are. Right. I didn't know that it was like, well, Lydia Clark, too. Like, I, I wasn't. Oh, yeah, Lydia Clark. Yeah, she's I didn't, in here, too. I didn't know. She was the one who did my first reading. I didn't know that you had to power yourself down. 
I didn't know that it was important to kind of turn your energy off so that you're not walking around doing readings for people all the time because Sandy used the best analogy to me. She said, would you ever watch your neighbor shower? And I said, no. She's like, from the outside of her house, she would never watch her shower? I go, no. She's like, why not? I said, because it's inappropriate and wrong. She goes, but you could? I said, yeah, her bathroom's on the first floor. She goes, but you wouldn't do it. And I went, no, of course not. Why? She goes, just because you could doesn't mean you should. Never do it psychically. And anybody who has this ability has the ability to look into someone's life like through their window right. and see what's going on. Because it's about energy, right? Because it's about energy. And I think energy should have boundaries and, and ethics. And by the way, it's also like physical energy. So if you see little hairs coming up off of my head, it's because of John. <laughs> yes, it's all his fault. <laughs> the, just because I had my hair cut yesterday and blow dried, they they didn't put the frizzies down. It's it's all about him. I, I, I assume but you full do responsible. have an energy about you. I mean, you I I I know I feel that you like you kind of rev up your battery when you're reading. Like yeah, and then he's I'm, like backstage and he's going like this. So I see him doing it, and I, I was speaking with him. I said, oops, I better do that, because he's doing it, because <laughs> I never did Wait, it. Do you remember the one event we did in Long Island at Westbury? It's like 3,000 people waiting for us to walk oh. out. And you kept disappearing into the bathroom, and I'm like, are you okay? And you were like, I am. And you said, I'm just, I'm getting inspired. And I was like, by the bathroom? And you were seeing images on the floor. No, because I, oh, my God, he's, he's outing me. <laughs> when I go to the bathroom, I... Like I'll I'll like I'll I'll like just my mind will go blank and I'll start seeing things on the floor. I'll see images and I was get that's when I got the somebody was buried with a um a certain a, a some kind of doll from I forgot what it was, yeah. but it was yeah, I, I did, but the thing about the Westbury that I'll never forget. I mean, he does this all the time in front of like three thousand people and, and it it's theater in the round, and I had never read for p theater in the round. Which, by the way, I, you know, full disclosure, it's when you are open to energy like that. The first couple of years that I went to that venue, right, I made sure that they didn't sell out a whole section, and I would keep my back to that section so that I oh. could feel where the energy well, was coming from. I wish you would have told me that yeah. ahead of time because it's very, I, it's confusing. You don't know what you figured. I didn't know where I was. I kept going around in circles. Yeah, I didn't know I didn't know where I was, but that was really so kind of you to invite me to do that. But then when we were in Amsterdam and we had lunch, yeah, you like launched into with the bottle with the water on the table. Do you oh, remember? Oh yeah. You started reading for one of my colleagues. Did I ever tell you the 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 who was that? Paul? No, Katrina. Oh, Katrina. Oh, well, maybe it was Paul. Love Katrina. It was one of the. I mean, you Katrina just like, also, if you're listening, big hug and kiss saved me when my office was falling apart. The two of them. Seriously, my office was falling apart, and they came and saved me. I can't even tell you how they saved me. But anyway, um, uh, what were uh, well, looking for symbolism, you saw it on the on the you saw symbolism oh, in the floor at Westbury. Okay, you saw okay, it in the okay, glass. Full disclosure: When I first started learning to read, I made my own crystal ball. I would take some kind of oil in a fish bowl. And I figured out a way to turn it, at the, put the top on and turn it upside down. So it was like this big thing. And when you, when you read, you need a focal point to focus on something. And I literally, it was mineral oil in it. Somebody said put mineral oil in it. And, I, and so I would read in that kind of like, and I would see things in it. So I still, to this day, can see things in the glass of water. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Do you do that? Yeah, scrying. Yeah, that's what that's what they they call it scrying, where you like when people look into water or. But you're also good with the cards reading. I it's my first love. You're so I good. I love cards because you gave me those Spanish cards. Yep. And I really don't understand them completely, but I can read them, but not by the rules. I just right. kind of psychically figure it out, and. Um, to this day, when I do my phone reading. I have them with me. They are on. Not here, but they're literally on the desk next to me. When you read. Every, every single time, every phone reading I do. But you're so good about it. And I remember once you said something. You were, re you were in my house in Michigan. In the den. You were in the den. You said, oh, this is a good room to read in. I said, okay. And you, and, and it's a you, really cool room because all your family is on the walls. That's true. My great-grandparents and everybody's there. And, and um, you, said, um, you said something that 
somebody, a friend of mine was going to do something and it was uh, give me something or whatever. You said, no, this is not going to happen. And uh, you don't remember. I do. I do now. I know, yeah. And you were 100%. You were right. Well, the thing about whether it, whether it be scrying or cards or numerology, astrology, they're all tools that help us to unlock the client's energy right. to be able to kind of navigate and walk around and, and see what they're doing and right. kind of know what's coming up for them. And kind of the, the reason why I love the cards, specifically Tower, is that they really have the archetype of the human experience. But there's some, like you don't like the Crowley ones, right? I don't. I don't Can like things. Can we talk about that? Sure. I don't like, we can talk about anything. Okay. Um, and why I don't, don't you like the I, Crowley one? I don't. Okay, so full disclosure. Okay. Going back to before I met you, I went out of my way to not talk about anything negative. Like, you know that. Because before you, you met me. Before I met you. Um, <laughs> and one of the things, and to go back to something else that you said earlier, is that I think it's really important to always pay respects to those that come before you. And for me, I always like to pay respects to Lydia or Sandy or right. Suzanne Northrup or George Anderson, yourself. In, you. in, in doing this work. Well, I think without... The old people. No, but without the people that are, <laughs> you know, the warriors and ambassadors, right? they pave the roads, right? Right. So Just like you paved the road for TV psychics that are right. on now. But I think it's important to always pay, pay an understanding and respect to where the subject matter is coming from mm -hmm. and then kind of move from that moving forward and, and you take with that. So when I first started, I started with cards and psychometry. So I still like that. And mm -hmm. I think what's important is that when you, as a metaphysical teacher, get into this subject matter, it's important to have something to plug in. And so many people want to just be psychic and be a medium. They don't want to understand that there's responsibilities, ethics, and everything that's involved with this. So yeah. astrology, numerology. And they want to be famous, and they want to get rich. Right. Good. Yeah. But it's important to Not, understand. It's very, very few people really are doing it for the work's sake. Right. We know that. But I went out of my way, specifically when Crossing Over was on the air. I didn't want to come across as religious, and I didn't want to come across talking about negative energies. Mm -hmm. And when you and I first met, we talked about the Sally, J Sally Jesse Raphael show that you did that time that still I always talk about. And then you said to me, can I ask you a question? Somebody asked you a question on Larry King Live, and you didn't acknowledge it in the way that I feel like you should have. And you did I it. said this to you? Yeah. And you said it in a way that wasn't, it wasn't like... Um, it wasn't disrespectful. It was more like, I think it's important to be able to address. And I said, I, I don't not believe that there are negative energies or trickster energies. I said, I just didn't want to cause panic. And I think now, more than ever, I think I've actually, and I give you full credit when I say it publicly, I think there are positive and negative energies in the universe. And I think with those positive and negative energies, we have to understand the negative in order to choose the positive. We have mm -hmm. to understand that, as you always say, a battery has a positive and negative charge. Right. I think we have to understand both. Right, right, and we do, and I mean, I never wanted to think there was bad or negative. In fact, I, until I was like 21 or 22 years old, I thought everybody was loving, everybody was kind, and everybody was generous, and everybody loved life, and right. lived life to the fullest, until I had an experience with an right. ex-husband. So I didn't, I didn't know. I, I thought everything was, was, was positive, and, um, and then I had people help me understand about my friend Malcolm and Mark, and they 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 introduced me to like that. There's different low level energies in in the universe. And but I came from the place that as long as I was protected, right. as long as energetically I did my psychic self defense and, you and are. I surrounded myself in prayer, right. that that can't have any power over you. Right. And. 90% of me still believe most of that to be true, but there's still a 10% window in there where you got to be careful and you have to make sure that you're diligent. And that's the problem. Most people aren't diligent. People get lazy. They get complacent. Right. And that if you're doing something. So going back to the cards, the reason why I don't like things that have like a negative connotation or that might be deemed negative, like witch boards or Ouija boards or things that might be game oriented, I don't like it because I don't feel like it gets the the respect that it deserves, whether it be positive respect or negative right. respect, I still think you need to kind of respect it for what it is. Like a light socket, like an outlet. If you are not, if it's not grounded and mm -hmm. you go plug something in, it can either surge your electronics right. or you can get zapped. So right. I think you gotta be, you gotta be grounded. But, but uh, you're very good at, at protecting your energy. You know what, speaking of protection, 
I was guided to bring these. You know, you know what it is? It's a flashlight. That's very, very funny. And I know, and I'll tell you why I, I brought these. Because, the Evolve members are, are laughing right now. Because. Right, because I, John has an amazing following, and he has a show called Evolve. And um, which I suggest, if you haven't signed up to watch it, uh, do, do so, because there's so much to learn about it. But he's got, a, you have a very loyal fan base. I kind of like to think of them more as a community than a fan base, because I think, I think to actually call them, I, nev I never like the word fan, even when like, we talk about like, TV shows. I think it's shows. more like a harem. <laughs> well, they're mostly women, but we have a lot of men now. Um, but I think to say somebody's a fan, <laughs> fan is short for fanatic. Right. And I don't think we have fanatics. Okay, no. But, but there's definitely have, a community. Okay, like, but you have a community of right. people who you work with and who follow you. And and now some of them are following me because of you. Thank you for that. And I notice on Twitter, because yeah. I'm not real big with social media, you guys, but I notice on Twitter that everybody's got a flashlight next to them. And so I brought it. In Thank honor you. of that's very cool of you because tell them what it what it symbolizes. I believe that it only takes a little bit of light to alleviate all the darkness, and I think that we're living in a time period where it seems like darkness seems to be winning. Um, and ironically, about I don't even know time wise now, probably about five or six years ago, I published a book, a fiction story called uh, Fallen Masters. Yeah, and that was really good. A lot of people are reading that and they're going, Hey, wait a minute. This is fiction, right? Like this is fiction, and now but a lot of But it's all starting stuff, to happen. Is right. that the one about POTUS? Yeah, yeah. Is that the one I read in Barbados? Um, yeah. You were writing it. Yep. So here's what I say: energy is energy, and energy is something that mm -hmm. is real. Mm -hmm. And if it is foggy, you can't see. No matter how bright your light is. Mm -hmm. So you have to recognize. The fog, and that fog might be grief, or that fog might be negativity, that fog might be a divorce. That fog is something that is Im important to be able to, you know, y slow down and recognize what's there. So this represents, if you shine your light, then you become a beacon for other people who might be in a dark spot. Mm -hmm. So if you're driving on a, on a highway and it's really, really foggy, you put your safety hazards on, and you see those lights flashing. So it lets the cars know behind you, like, there's right. a car there. there it's a, stops it's a warning. It is a warning. So light alleviates darkness. And you, right. only, you only need a little bit of it to kind of be able to see. So, so thank you for doing this. Yeah, of course. Say that again. You only need a little bit of light to alleviate all the darkness. You guys, you get that? You only need a little bit of light to alleviate all the darkness. I think I like playing with the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's something that's important for kids, too. Because so many kids that are very sensitive, and we're living in a time period where children are so sensitive that they're they're coming in i feel like with a new chip or like new programming it is it, it we never talked about this yeah it's like they're like the crystal children the indigo children they're smart they're they, they're, they're like they, they have come, like an open channel already yeah, to the universal knowledge and i think astrologers it's can, crazy astrologers could better talk about that like with the generational planets mm -hmm. but i think one of my favorite favorite stories with olivia and she's now 10 is when she was about three years old she was sitting on someone's lap and there was a magazine and she's looking at the photos in the magazine and she's trying to make the photos bigger on paper. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, and, and I was like, no, sweetie, that doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And she was looking at me like, I don't, I don't know, she, didn't know to, she had no, what to, no idea what to do with the paper. She just wanted to like do this. So I think kids coming in have That's a crazy. way more intuitive mindset. And I think it's a, I think we have to come up with tools to be able to help them understand spirituality and That's energy such a good idea and my concern mm -hmm. and I say this honestly is I don't think that some of the people who are coming out psychic in the last decade right I don't think that they're equipped they're to not, be able they're to not like dedicated no, but they're to not, the work they're not equipped to understand like it's not okay just to say hey I want to be psychic right and I'm gonna do readings because you could have something right. that's very accurate what they do right and cause a lot of damage it's if like they're not if they don't understand what they're doing it's and right. what the responsibilities are regarding the work right like people who have mug shots and who are, were arrested and who rip people off. Yeah, people who, like that. Who tried to get famous. And there's a there's a lot of stuff that, that goes on. And I sit back and I, 
you know, I just did an event in Charleston, South Carolina, and, and one of the uh, Evolve members were there. Hi, Lorraine. Um, Hi, Lorraine. And we call her Mama L. But um, at the at the end of the event, I said to her, you know, one of the things that I'll say at the beginning of every event, which uh, you haven't seen, so I've changed things up a little bit. Yeah, I haven't seen you. I need to come to one of your events. But one of the things I'll say is I'm going to disappoint you all right now in the beginning. Oh, and no. they're like, like, why? And I said, I'm not going to be talking about your dreams, your jewelry, your photos, your ladybugs, your feathers, your tattoos, your... And I go down the laundry list of all the things that anybody can say that they're psych say, who here has mom's ring? Like, right. seriously? Me. So, exactly. And my mom's gone 20 years, 25 years, and her jewelry's in my top drawer. So I think right. that there are certain things that I feel like we as the people who have been doing this now, three decades, four decades, two decades, I don't know how long you've no, been four, almost 45 years. 32. So when you, when you put... Like, this fall, probably 45 when you When you put that out there, I think it gives us the... The, the right and the responsibility to say, hey, listen, you know what? You need to push the envelope further. Go past, uh, you know, did you see your dad in a dream? Go past, do you have your dad's watch? Mm -hmm. Get the information that's going to be, like, you know, very specific. And at the end of the event, I said to Lorraine, I go, you know, what did you think about the, the information? And, and she said, listen, she said, I've been watching it for a long time. She goes, the details, the teaching, she goes, it's so much different than, you know, when I first saw you. Right. I said, but did you notice that certain people just wanted to know was that feather really them? Right. Was that dime really them? Well, it's because they people want confirmation. They want they want to know that they want validation that their loved one, the the love connection they have, that they're they're giving them gifts. And I understand that. I, and I think it's absolutely fine. And but as a medium, like I validate that it's all happening. Right. So if it's already if it's happening, like I don't want to I don't want to talk about that. Sometimes I have to say, I mean, I agree with you, but. But sometimes I have to say, like, the only way a spirit can go come to someone is when they are quieted and they are in a dream and they're trying to connect with that person. And it's the only time they can get their own message. Right, and I'm down with really that. If it's really real. And what I'm saying is that's real and it's happening. Right. I feel that from a professional standpoint. Right. We need to go beyond that. Like, I think it's important to go beyond that mm -hmm. in, a, in a session. Right. Like, the right. stuff that you right. actually will talk about in a reading. Right. Is ridiculous. It's not like, did you see a butterfly? You know, it's yeah. like you're going to be getting, I, I know what you get. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> We're not going to say. That was an awkward pause while, <laughs> while we have this like private no, conversation because, of all the things that. <laughs> because there are things that I'm not going to say that happen to you in your world because it's none of nobody's oh, business but funny. your world. But thank you for saying that. And my family appreciates that. Yeah, and I appreciate that. But you've also known things with me. So it's, you know, it's. Well, that was one of the Twitter questions. People are like, if we were truly a fly on the wall for you guys, like, you know, what would the conversations be yeah. like? Yeah. It's like, oh. You well, have well, no well, idea. I, you, would, you, you wouldn't. You go, they're spiritual? <laughs> and honest. <laughs> and honest, truthful. And honest. I think the truth is the most important thing, though, right? Yeah. Because yeah. in the truth, we're freed. But, yeah, you could. And we have psychic jokes. And, and I have a nickname for him. I call him Pima. It's an acronym. Yeah. He's a pain in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's, I, I love you I'm a, dearly. I'm a psychic, I love you dearly. I'm a psychic terror. Yeah, he is. But but you also um, motivate me to do things, other things, you know, that I probably, even even this show that, you know, he did evolve. I'm thinking, well, well, if he's doing that, why can't I do something? You know, so you like, but you are. And so here's the rest of the story. He hasn't been there yet, but you guys know I'm, I'm in Palm Springs sometimes, and my sister and brother-in-law and nephew bought me very generously a golf cart. I didn't play golf all year, but I have a golf cart. And they gave me, I had to get a license plate for it because I like to go take it on the street a little bit. The license plate, I don't have a picture of it, it says PMA. That's pretty funny. So like, you're a pain in the like, ass? No, it's like <laughs> your gum on my shoe. I'm everywhere. <laughs> no, your gum on my shoe. <laughs> That's a compliment, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, totally. You're, you're, it's it's a big compliment because, yeah, I mean, he's just very sweet. He just calls me Sharzy. Well, I 
use your name in various other ways too. Oh, that's true. That's like, why you like the name of the show. Yeah, because you can use it. Like it fits in so many like places. Like, like Good Sharma. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's true. So that was really kind of you to tweet out for me, since I don't really, I kind of magoo tweeting. But um, besides that, somebody wanted to know. Um, let's see, when psychics. Oh. When Psychics Talk Shop, well, that's the one you, that you said. Okay. One of the big questions was from another Evolve member, um, Michelle Reese, wanted to know about pets and the afterlife, because so many people lose oh, pets. Oh, yes, yeah, since you are both animal lovers, let's hear about the pets that come through. How does prayer for our loved ones help them on the other side? So answer that. Um, in my experience, and I say this from a non-religious dogmatic standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint. Dogmatic? <laughs> dogmatic. Um, I believe that <laughs> energy and prayer with intention are pretty powerful. And I, I go back to just an experience that I had. I was in New Jersey after September 11th and I was doing a reading, a group reading, and I was reading something on the left-hand side of the room. And when I looked at a woman on the right-hand side of the room, I saw musical notes kind of coming around to her. And I found it odd because I wasn't reading for her. Mm -hmm. So my logical brain, which is now giving information to the back left-hand section of the room, thought somebody had like a bubble thing in the room because bubbles were coming up. It looked like bubbles of notes. So I very kind of like walked down the aisle and just looked over to see like what that was. And a woman was praying the rosary. And she was like Aww. touching the rosary beads and the, the notes were coming out of the beads. Wow. And in my head, I'm like, what the hell is that? And I heard prayer. Prayer are like musical notes that lift our vibration. Aww. So to me that like validated that it's like fuel for our spiritual gas tank. And you wrote a book about prayer. I did. I wrote a, which was reluctant, but I did. I wrote a book on um, using the rosary for practical intentions. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter what, what religious religion you are. I don't care. If, it doesn't matter. But prayer is prayer, as long as you're praying with intent. And I think whether it be for a human or a fur family member, I think setting intentions and praying with intentions helps people to evolve and lifts vibration for them. Well, I, you know, like if you guys like, if you're like in your everyday life and then in your peripheral you see something go by and then you look and there's nothing there, many times it's your pet who's passed over, who's crossed over. Yep. Has that happened with you? It, the, it, with Jolie and Roxy, I, I would have thought I would have felt oh, more of them, but I have to say it. When my aunt lost her dog, when I lived in my grandmother's house, we had built upstairs and Max was a schnauzer. And Max would sit at the bottom of the steps staring up and he just, he just knew that there were rooms to pee in, that he just wanted to get up there. And we kept the baby gate at the bottom because he really did pee on everything. Aww. And after Max passed, the only sightings that ever happened were from my clients. I would, <laughs> I would come out from the room that I was reading, which was the top of the steps, and one, the, one, the person coming into my, my room next would say, how old is your dog? <laughs> and I'd be like, what? And they'd be like, the schnauzer? How old? I, I, I called him or her, but they, he didn't come back. How old is him? Your and clients I, saw the spirit. Of the dog. And I would be like, old. <laughs> like, really old. <laughs> <laughs> Ageless That's almost. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, so Max made a lot of appearances post-physical body. So, okay, and, and I, I, I know there's an animal heaven, and not everybody gets to go there. But I know that if you had a connection with your animal and your dog or your cat or your bird or your horse or your I had hamster, a monkey come through. In Maine, you're a, kidding. Yeah, a it was service, pet? a service monkey. Aww. I thought it was a dog. I got it Aww. as a dog, but the woman said, "She goes, everything you're saying is accurate." She goes, "It's, a, it's not a dog." I'm like, "Well, what else can you have a service That's animal amazing. of?" That's amazing. a service monkey. Okay, so talking about your events, John does events all around the world. Do you have any? Oh, by the way, the day today is April fourteenth, two thousand seventeen. In case you're watching this, in the future, in the future, and. I'm eight feet under or something. You'll know where this is. Not, not going anywhere. Oh, it's six feet under, I think. But I'm, I don't think I even want to do that. So anyway, so um, where's your next event? And how can people get a hold of you? People can get a hold of me at johnedward.net. No S on Edward. Do you have that up there, Tony? So it's Thank you. johnedward.net. johnedward.net. Um, pretty much everything I do is up there. Okay, now. Um, In Canada, I think I'm going to Canada next. You go to Canada next. Okay. And... Um, you have some amazing stories. Like I've sat and I've watched you in your in your events, 
And But I also know that you had some stories where you brought families together that didn't even know they were related. Or yeah, I've had that, I've had a couple of unique tell, moments. Tell where, us a good story. Um, they kind of they kind of fade. So like one of my favorites is there was a a woman that I made a connection with, who. You know what they're all they're like I'm trying to think about the the details, but well, what didn't you, wasn't there a spirit that the two that they didn't know they were both in the room and they the, the two different people knew the same spirit. Um. Yeah, I've had a lot of that actually. In groups. Yeah, I was in. I was there. I watched it. Yeah, I've had a lot. One, one that stands out for me was in Brisbane, Australia, where I, I read for a family who lost someone in a really bad car accident. I think it was like their child, oh. and they were talking about they were concerned because they felt their child passed alone, mm-hmm. and the spirit was telling me, "No, the e- EMS worker stayed with me while I passed and was oh. talking to me." So I just desc- I start describing this, and. The actual EMS worker was in the room and stood up. No way. Yeah, stood up and. Was and it like, wasn't planned. How could it be planned? Eighteen hundred people in the room. They came That's all over. crazy. Yeah, they didn't know. They didn't even know who the person was. So I got the information. I got where the accident was. I described it. The person then described where the accident was. The emergency worker knew where that accident was because he was the one who tended to it. So t- that's divine intervention. It was kind of cool because then that's the, like the spirit working overtime. Because then the EMS guy got a chance to talk to the family. Oh, yeah, it was really powerful. It was oh. really, really powerful. But it was one of those like moments that kind of takes you out of the, takes you out of the zone. So it's like you know you're in the in the moment doing it, right. and then all of a sudden it's like you get like popped out for a second. Right, right. Like you said, but don't fall into the ocean. Don't fall in the pool. That it, he says, don't fall into the pool when I get too emotional, because then you lose your track of yeah because then you you kind of lose the the moment you lose the energetic moment but there was one time where somebody uh was a their person was the heart or lung donor or the kidney donor for someone in canada and i I made a connection yeah the kidney donor that's the one i was trying to remember yep and then they they wind up came they wound up coming to an event and i got a chance to meet them it's like a lot of cool you know what i think life is about connections Right. And, and when we do what we do, we we make those connections. And it used to be that we would make those connections and then we would get a letter in the mail. Right. Well now the connections are stronger because of social media. So right. these, these stories pop up in a in a really very big and quick way. Wait, so so the 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 kidney donor was in the room or No, the person that I made the connection with was the donor and then I wound up making a connection. Oh, because they were in, deceased? Yeah, and then I wound up making a connection with the person in Canada who wow. was the recipient of that person. Okay, that is, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. No. I was going to say you can't make this shit up, but I didn't think that was a good thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, you cannot make you that can't. up. No. The details are, I think, is what's important. You know, when somebody looks at, looks at a reading, I think you should be able to look at the trivial, mundane, factual information that's not um, emotionally de- delivered. So right. I feel like reading should not be performed. I think emotion should not be given. I agree with you. I feel like we're surgeons. We're energetic surgeons You're passing right. on information. And you cannot lose your train of thought. That's how trickster energies get to people. They, they distract you. Yeah. That's... That's one way, and anything you're doing, guys, it could be you're driving or you're being distracted by your phone while you're driving or whatever it is, trickster energies get us by distraction. When we're reading, we have to stay focused and stay in that moment. Yep. And That's I think a it's really also, good point, John. And I also think it's important to be empowered to the point of, of sticking to what you're getting. Like when you're. Oh, you're so like that. You're so like that. I'm like that, too. And then, and then it gets frustrating, and it's, it gets like so annoying when they don't understand it. Right. Well, if people are coming for, I think they need, they need to know what their intention is. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody's going for a, for a private reading, they're gonna have a, a phone reading with you. Right. What, what's the purpose? Like really, what's the purpose? Why are you going? I think you need to know that. Mm-hmm. So whether you're going to a group, whether you're going to a private, you need to know what your purpose is. Mm-hmm. And if your purpose is not to allow the process to happen and that you can be disappointed if you don't hear from the person you want to hear from, mm-hmm. and if they don't come through with the script, then don't go. 
Don't have the reading. Right, because you're... Don't, just don't. You're, you're setting yourself up for yeah, failure. He who expects nothing shall not be disappointed. Will you stay if we take a break? Because sure. um, we, we have other um, Twitter people that want to know things about your traveling and... Oh. I wonder if you're putting Sonny in a trance while you're it's doing this. It's something, and how... He does that a lot. And how, how can living people come through in a reading who are ill? So... Hang in there, and we'll be right back. Hi, everybody. It's Char. Well, many of you have asked if I teach psychic intuition, and I do. Everybody has a sixth sense. Everybody has an ability to prevent problems and attain goals in their lives, and I'd love to teach you. Just go to char.net, C-H-A-R-N-E-T, and join one of my classes, and call Nikki, and she'll help you out. Remember, Intuition will take you places logic never could. Hi, we're back with John Edward, the John Edward, who I'm so happy to have you in Thank our you. studio and our Char Vision, and Sonny's happy to see Uncle John. So, um, okay, so how can living people come through in a reading who are ill? How can living people? This is from Sandy Duncan. Duncan? Yeah, how can Sandy, living people? Sandy, Sandy. I know her name. Okay. How can living people come through? How can living people come through in a reading who are ill? Oh, maybe what if somebody's oh, in like a it. coma or something? Right. So con consciousness is contained in this physical vehicle. So driver of the car, consciousness, soul is being the driver, mm -hmm. and the body is being the car. So mm -hmm. if the car is in the shop, mm -hmm. the driver doesn't always stay in the shop. Right. Driver drops the car off, and then driver goes off. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when somebody's in the shop for a long time, mm -hmm. that consciousness gets stronger and stronger at being outside the vehicle while still being tethered. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people talk about seeing the silver cord when they have an out-of-body experience. That's, that's explain what that is. That's the, the, um, the silver it's cord like is the, the ethereal yeah, the body that connects to our physical body. Which is our consciousness and soul. And when right. it's outside of the physical body, it can actually communicate so I think that people can people when when somebody's watching someone pass when someone's dealing with palliative care when someone's in a coma or Alzheimer's or dementia when they're going through whatever they're going through I think it's really important to make sure that we talk to them as if they're completely coherent because it's able to be etched on the hard drive of their soul and their consciousness is something that will remember everything and sometimes they'll come through after they've passed with the conversations and the things you talked about while, while they, were, they still, were in a coma. While they were still here. Really? Sure. Is that what you, you've you done? Mm hmm I've had that happen. That's incredible. The only time in 32 years that I've ever doubted this and thought, oh, my God, the cynics are right. Maybe this I'm just mind reading was I read for a woman who her mom came through so clearly. And I always mm -hmm. tell the story. At the end of the reading, I just by chance said, wow, your mom was amazing. There was only two things she didn't tell me, when she passed and how she passed. And the girl was crying. She goes, that's because she hasn't. And it was like, <laughs> like, what? And then she explained that her mom was like in a coma for years and being kept alive. So the wow. one thing that made me question was the same exact event that solidified and made it concrete for me. But I do. Just the, just the vehicle. Yeah, I do. But I do believe that um, we can be in this. I know he's falling asleep. He's like, <laughs> he's, he's in very a trance. interested in the conversation. Trans Chihuahua. <laughs> Uh, I, but I do believe that when somebody is in a coma, they're part there and they're part here. Yeah, it's like taking a camera mm -hmm. and putting it in the water where you could see what's above the water and then what's below the water. Mm -hmm. And you have that same perspective mm -hmm. and the same kind of lens. Yeah, you always make figure out logical ways to explain this stuff. Thank you. I That's take no credit good. for it. It's all them. They show it to me. I just pass it on. Them meaning his guides. Yes. His guides are very powerful guides. They really are. Like, they're very smart, and they're powerful, and, yeah. Oh. Do you think he was, like, some kind of, like, pervert in his past life? <laughs> no, I just think, <laughs> I'm he's just en teasing. think he's enjoying the energy. <laughs> I'm just teasing everybody. I love my dog. He's in hi, baby. Hi, moo boo boos. Okay, kisses and lovings. Okay, so, uh, okay, so somebody wants to know what your favorite things about traveling from place to place Food. are. Food, <laughs> even in England. Um, I've, it's all about. It's always all. It is all about food. 
Well, England, I, under I understand that. Pizza Express, the dough balls. <laughs> okay, Ireland. Um, Pizza Express, <laughs> the dough balls. Scotland? There's a, it's a hard one. There's an Italian restaurant that I can't remember the name of it, but I know where it's at, and I try to go there every time I'm there. Okay, but your second, your, really your second country, your adopted country, is Australia. I love Australia. I know. My, my soul is Australian. It is. It, everything about Australia is it's it's you're so connected with it. Okay, where do you eat there? Um, Machiavelli's in Sydney, okay. Crinidi's in Sydney. Okay. Uh, I think there are phenomenal Italian restaurants, but there's a whole bunch of steak places. There's like it, really yep, good food. Really good food everywhere. And, and you were kind enough to take me to uh, South Africa. We had such a good time. We had so much fun. And there were good restaurants there by the Michelangelo. It was probably the most inappropriate I ever was with you. Really? Yeah. Remember in the, what the, <laughs> wait, you better explain this because, you better explain this because. <laughs> no, not that kind of what inappropriate. What kind of inappropriate were you with me? Do you, do you remember the, when, when, <laughs> when they said, uh, they had you, um, they brought the top DJ in. With his wife. Oh, the top DJ. And you started. You had me read for the DJ on the radio from the radio. And you wound up reading for, <laughs> what the, what his dad was. You're talking about the dad. I don't think the dad was even passed, but I was talking about. And you got the name. Yeah. And, and you're like, is there an F? Is there an R? Is there an L? Is it Desmond? Remember? You know, and every time I do that, every time I do that, I think of you. I just did it in a reading. Completely yesterday. inappropriate. I. <laughs> Face you, down. You cracked up. The promoter was looking at me like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Because I do. I'm 12. Hear, I hear phonetically, but sometimes I get no. in the, it gets in the way. No, but and I it comes pride through. myself, like, you know, I'm OCD, right? Yeah. So it's like, I, I pride myself on understanding how people work. <laughs> so it's like, you're my anomaly. I cannot <laughs> figure, I can't figure you out. But it's like, is I, there an L in name? Is there an A in the name? I did it the other it day. Susan, like, I, it was a total name. I, I went, is there a J? Is there an M? Is it Paul? Right. I, I remember you were like, I don't do that. I'm like, yes, you do. He showed me that I do that because I didn't realize I did it. But, but I'm, I did I'm positive. It. They go like this for you. They go, here's an S and here's an A. And then they open the door and they're like, is it Joe? <laughs> <laughs> and listen, however it is, it works for you it because works. you were able to get information in Dutch and I've watched you do it in Hebrew and I watched you do it in German. I watched you do it in so many different languages. And I say they're like, I would be totally screwed like if I have to do that. <laughs> I literally sound like I'm stuttering when I have to get foreign names. Well you know, the one I'll tell you what I did learn when I was in the Netherlands and I it's been a long a while since I've well I have I have some clients from the Netherlands. Hi everybody in, in the Netherlands. Um, You're not gonna ask me where we, we eat there? Where did we eat there? Well, do you know, oh the Hagen Dazs ice cream? That's our place. Yeah, but that's our place. You told me it's but, closed now, right? Uh huh. Didn't you tell me it was closed? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't. I mean, I, I'm sure they opened another one somewhere. But, um, uh, but what I did was somebody said you should learn the alphabet, how the Dutch speak in the alphabet. Although I don't speak Dutch. Right. But it's like a, b, c. Oh, so you were able to kind of like. So that's so. It still doesn't, I mean, it's still difficult. I'd still, I, I still look back on this day and I had, every year I did my shows in the Netherlands, we thought, oh, they're not going to want me back next year. And every year they wanted me back, because, but I don't know how I did it. I, I mean, I know, I, I still do it, but I don't know how it works. It's my it guides. Works. It's the yeah. guides and it's they how, come through. It's how they give it to you. Yeah, it's the guides and they come through. Well, it's like, I'm not sports related. I, I'm like not good with sports. Right. And then every year, Sand uh, Sandra, Katrina will ask me, you know who's going to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? And you so get it, right? I will get, I will get things that are connected to the team instead of giving me the team. Oh. Like they don't just go. It's going to be the Yankees, right? You know, it's going to be the Giants, it's right? Gonna They're going to say like, they have a blue uniform. No, or... they'll give me something abstract. Like one of the players had X, Y, and Z happen. So it almost like sends her on a mission to try to figure out like, like who who it is, and it's never direct. It's never like And are simple. you right? And does she bet? I don't know if she bets. Oh, Katrina. I don't know if she bets. You have to ask her. I wonder if she bets. Can you do that? Oh, my God. We can put a bet down. <laughs> I'm calling you. I'm calling you for the World Series. I don't think it's meant for that. 
But all right, we can try. Okay, but once in a while, <laughs> I think it's okay to do a little bit. A of long betting. time ago, when a I worked, my father used to bet numbers and win, and he used to share the money with everybody. And I recently had a great in um, experience with that that I'll tell you about off camera. Apparently, well, I can tell me off camera. Okay. But when I, I talked about it last weekend, when I was when I was working at the hospital, the she's like shining the light at me. <laughs> don't go into the don't go into the light. Don't go into the light. Okay, what? <laughs> okay, Clarice. Okay, what? Oh, it's like a charnable. <laughs> charnable. No, but when I was uh, working at the hospital, one of the managers of the lab. Um, said, hey, does your ability work at the track? I was like, I don't know. Let's try it out. So he gives me the sheet. It's like 12 horses that are in the race. Yeah. And I like sat there and I'm like, no, not this one. I'm like, no, not this one. It took me like a half hour and I circled it. I was like, all right, Bill, this is the winner. And right. He looked at me and he goes, you are correct. He goes, that is the winner of seven races ago. <laughs> he goes, can you like, <laughs> could you like move this up faster? <laughs> the race happened. They okay. announced it. But he thing it's not about winning the money it's about knowing like that you were given the information absolutely it's, i would have it's as always much fun about, yeah at, at a craps table or a roulette table right playing for skittles you know what i'm saying yeah. like i don't even like skittles it's like it, it's more just the it's just the, fun the knowing of, like, ooh. that's the joy because it's priceless right when you're given information that's real and that turns out to be reality that's the joy of it and anybody who does this work who can do this gets that. Right. But the, the, the but direct. once in a while, a few dollars does help. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's not <laughs> meant for that. No, it's not. Like when I was in that. Kansas City, I went to one of the casinos yeah. during the day. Oh. It's completely empty. Um, this is many years ago. And I knew, not like kind of knew, like I knew right? 18 was coming out. Really? Like I like was so positive that I spent almost like $500 playing 18, 18, 18. And then I was cornering it, and I was boxing it, and I was playing the rows. And what happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I was like, this is, no, this is not fun. Because your guides were teaching you a lesson. So I left. You're, and I went to go play craps. And as I'm playing craps, all of a sudden I get this like, feeling like I was going to do a reading. Like this pull, like somebody's like staring at me, like somebody's coming up. Like, yeah. You know that, that feeling like yeah, something's yeah, yeah, about yeah. to happen? And I like, look over the table that I was playing at. The, <gasps> the girl like, was like, looking at me, and she just was like, like I'm so sorry. Oh, and then no. she like, pointed to the... Display, 18, 18 came out like four times in a row and then skipped and then two lights. It came out like six times. It, it's all about timing, isn't it? Yeah, it's also about showing, I thought, for me, it's not about that. No, it's, it's like, not. But it's about, no, but you knew and you knew you were guided. It's just like, if there is going to be an earthquake, could you just like let me know like and ask your guides to be like on time with it? Right. Because if I leave town and then I come back, I just don't want to be in it. Do you think they would? They could do that. I, I think your guys could do it quicker and faster. Well, we'll call each other if their God forbid is an earthquake. But they keep saying on the radio there's going to be an earthquake and or that we're overdue or whatever. But let's not talk about that kind of stuff because. No, I think the I think the earthquakes that are that are happening are more energetic, and I think that they're 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 big and and that makes sense. And they're and they're coming. I don't think it's just physical. I, right. I think that there's. There's going to be a big. A, there's a lot of shifts and changes, and in I our, feel like in our world, yeah, I mean, big time, huge, Very big, big time. We're good. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's not gonna look like what we see now. No, and I think that the division that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can tell you that for the first time in my entire career, that I feel like I'm actually affected by the energy of the collective, mm -hmm. where I was never before ever, right, ever affected. I, I, I feel it as well. I felt quite insulated. Yeah, I, I I feel it as well. It's it's crazy. It's 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 like we I've need had to, to get the world back in balance. But I've had to literally unfollow and not unfollow. I had a, I've had to block so many people that were actual active Twitter people oh. with me oh. on social media. Oh wow! Because they didn't like something that I tweeted, and they felt like oh, it was just a matter of time before you were going to be anti-Trump. I was like, Whoa, what? Whoa! I'm you're, like, but Holy. you're not political. I would fail. I know you. I you're know not political. I would, I would fail. Do you know the other day? Not well, last two weeks ago. I, so Justin asked me, what GOP stand stood for, and I was like, uh, I'm like. 
government of patriots? I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, I had to look it up. No clue. What does it mean? Grand old party. Grand old party? Yeah. Well, I'm that I'm, embar- I'm actually turning red. I'm like, they're like <laughs> I had it like literally well, look it up. I had no clue. I, I didn't know what it was. So, but you know me, I go, and one you know. government and 12 The more you know. John, I'm so happy that you're here and oh, that, thank that you. you shared all your knowledge with our Shar visionaries. And, and I, and I want to thank all your Evolve people for watching too, because it means a lot to me. And, um, you are welcome back here any time. Will you. you please come back? Anytime you want. It's so much fun. So much fun. And thank you for all the kind things you do for people and all the people you help and all the, all the quiet things he does that people don't even know about. Thank you so much. And everybody at home, thank you so much for watching Char Vision and, and supporting us because it means the world to me. And, you know, uh, just remember... Intuition will take you places logic never could. I love you. Thank you. Bye-bye.